Exploring the world of exotic Southeast Asian dishes may sound overwhelming, but there's no reason you can't experience the diverse and captivating flavors that form the culinary link between the Asian and the Indian subcontinent in a simpler takeout style way. Lim Bum thinks there is nothing better than inviting friends and family into his home to enjoy some of his favorite dishes, and he's here to show us just how easy a simple stir fry can be to make, and all with locally available ingredients. Welcome. Hi, how's it going? So I, it's it's going great because you brought me delicious food to try, yes. and so what we're doing here is stir fry. Um, yes. I just can we dish it up and eat it while we're talking? Yeah. Please. <laughs> like I just like, yeah, I don't want to I want to look at it, it and I want to keep go. eating it. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. what you have here, tell me a little bit about the dish. All right. So this is our family stir fry. Um, it's a recipe from my mom. We had to dissect it because she does it in that very traditional mom style where she'll like put a little bit of salt and taste it. And we're like, oh, it's not right yet. I better like call my ancestors and see <laughs> if this is gonna be the way to season it. Well. Like my wife and I need a recipe card, okay. so we actually like were able to watch her do it and like film her doing it and did dissect how to get these family recipes down. So it's been like a journey for us to get these recipes down. Something that we can even pass on through our own kids. Yeah. Then, so with this one, it's kind of our. If you need a quick meal, to. Oh, I'm do, sorry. We're starting over because I I had. A, an M on your name so, instead of an N. So, oh, sure. It is. Yeah. It was, it's bun, yeah. Yeah, I like the bread. Like so, a bread. We're so. gonna, that was perfect. Yeah. You were perfect. Let's do that exactly the same way. Exploring the world of exotic Southeast Asian dishes may sound overwhelming, but there's no reason you can't experience the diverse and captivating flavors that form the culinary link between the Asian and the Indian subcontinent in a simpler, takeout style way. Lim Bun thinks there is nothing better than inviting friends and family into his home to enjoy some of his favorite dishes, and he's here to show us just how easy a simple stir fry can be to make, and all with locally available ingredients. Welcome. Hi. Okay, so you're gonna Give, I'm so happy you're here because you've brought amazing food and I want to start eating it right away. Sure. So first, can you tell me a little bit about this dish? Yes, so this is our family stir fry. It's a recipe from my mother. And when I say recipe, I mean, she's the one that will like salt it and taste it a little bit and be like, hmm, I'm gonna call on my ancestors and tell me how to flavor this. Well, my wife and I don't work that way. Yeah. Like we're, you know, Midwestern recipe followers. So we would watch her, film her, and dissect those recipes from there so that we would have something that we can keep passing on to our kids in a way that was very more approachable and manageable than that cooking style you see where it's like, it's so foreign and exotic and I'm not gonna be able to do this. And I love how you're we, like, call our ancestors. Yeah, like why, like, I mean, it makes sense. So we made it so it's a lot simpler um, and still very, as you would say, authentic mm -hmm. because this is a stir fry that we would have at least once a week. It comes together super easy and I would compare it to almost like a casserole, like, what, what do you have left in the fridge? And what are you trying to save on? And how do you want to stretch your budgets? Well, that's very true to what you would do with a stir fry as well. Okay, so um, let's dish it up and start eating it. And then yeah. I want you to tell me about the ingredients. Yeah, I sure. just don't want to not, I just want to be eating it right away. Yeah, please. Okay, so you have here a bowl. Is this the way you actually serve this? Yes, okay. yeah. So you, right here we have a bowl of long grain white jasmine scented rice, and okay. that is very typical to Southeast Asian cuisine. Okay. So a lot of different kinds of rices, and this is what we have. So and we have um, a slotted spoon and a regular one, depending if you want it more soupy or not. Okay. And so please help yourself. I will, I'm excited. Okay, so now tell me a little bit more about the ingredients too of what is in this. Sure. Um, typically our family does this with uh, sliced up pork butt or any other protein that you want. In this instance, we decided to do tofu because um, I heard that you prefer, prefer to have yeah. like no meat in yours and it's 
an easy way to kind of accommodate for people's meal preferences or if you have family concerns about allergies. Our son happened to have several allergies, one of them even being to garlic. And it was just like, oh, the travesty, you know, but you know, we just add a little bit more onion and you're kind of good to go. So this one in particular, yeah. as we are featuring just... locally available ingredients mm -hmm. has been good because it has tofu, broccoli, flowers, yellow onion, carrots, and some mushrooms. What actually makes it unique is these are actually um, seafood mushrooms because they have a light shrimpy flavor mm -hmm. without actually having to use meat and still having like your friends be able to enjoy it mm -hmm. as something um, flavorful. Oh, it's so good. I love it. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about the ingredients. You, you know, you, you told me that it's a little bit of the casserole where you can just, what do you have left? Yes. And it can mm -hmm. be different, but are there differences between the stir fries you might find, for example, in Cambodia versus China versus Korea. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what I find is that the technique in the cooking for stir fries is very ubiquitous. It started in like 200 BC in China and it just traveled throughout all of Asia. And so, but the thing is you get to put your own unique spin on it. So in Southeast Asia, they might use more galagna, which is a type of ginger, or um, uh, lemongrass, kaffir lime leaves. So it's just, it's available to them. They also get that added benefit of being on the trade routes from the Indian subcontinent, as you had mentioned. So they get extra spices and other ingredients from there that would enhance the flavors. But bringing it home to being here in the Midwest, it's just like, you don't want to have to go searching for those three ingredient recipes where one of them is unicorn tears and you can't find them. Right. And it's just like, it's supposed to be something quick and easy. Like my wife will even just crack open a bag of frozen like stir fry vegetables that you can get in the aisle and toss it in and just whip this up and it'll still be a nice filling meal that is easy and accessible to anyone at their own homes. I love that you mentioned the ingredients. You know, you, you said that you have this easy three ingredient recipe, yay, but then one of the ingredients is impossible to find yeah, or use. Yeah, it's impossible to find. Right, exactly. So you have all these great th ideas and then you get home and you kind of like get a little disappointed. So you're like, I'll just go through a drive through and you don't have to. Right. You know, you can actually make your family a delicious meal with things available to you. So walk me through a little bit the process for cooking this um, so that, I mean, everybody's getting hungry watching it and I've got my pan. I, you know, traditionally is it's pretty hot. So yeah, you want to go about medium, medium, high, and you don't necessarily have to use a wok as people s s think that you might do. Like we made this all in a regular frying pan. Mm -hmm. So, but there is a certain order of the steps that will do for most successful stir fries. You start with like an, a neutral oil base, Okay. And then you start with the longest cooking ingredients to the shortest timed cooking ingredients. So if you have proteins that are raw and then your vegetables and then finishing sauces. And then at the end of it, we could top this with like um, peanuts if we wanted to or any other extra seasonings if you wanted to. So it really typically goes in that order and you'll find that to be true with most recipes. Um, the only other thing is to consider is that the amount, because like if you're making it just for like us two or we're having a double date with friends over, you know, it's a little bit like this. But when you want to do the recipe, if you're, you know, cooking for a crowd, I mean, do your math and, and season it correctly and call on your ancestors to do so, too, if you're not <laughs> quite sure. And tell me a little bit maybe how Cambodian um, food is even more unique than some of the other Southeast Asian culinary so, delights. Yeah, um, they also have, Cambodia in particular has that distinction again of Chinese cooking techniques, Indian spices, all slamming together on this um, Southeast Asian continent, but they were also a French colony. So they got the coffee culture and the pastry culture, baking culture of um, France as well. So it is just um, different when you go there because um, like where Thai food might emphasize like certain spices and certain flavor palettes. Yes, it's similar, but um, Cambodia tries to push things that not only are harmonious, but something that will just hit the spot is what they kind of say in the language, where if you want something sweet, there's gonna be something that's sweet or yeah. sour or bitter or tangy. It's and got it, it just, all. It's got it all. And well, thank you so much for bringing me this delicious food and teaching yeah. me a little bit about Southeast Asian cuisine. Thank you for having me.